Playoff basketball, baby. They said we couldn't do it, but we're back. We're not tanking. The Knicks playoffs, Knicks Celtics. Let's go. Cue that 90s playoff music. This is the NBA on... Um... Summer League. I think we see Willis coming out. Johnson cuts left, now fires a three, and it's good! And he's fouled! Hey guys, welcome back to the Terry and Trey mixtape. We realize some of you guys are getting us mixed up, so this is Terry, and I'm Trey, and we are happy that you guys are enjoying our videos and subscribing, and we want to give a big thank you out to everyone for your comments, and hopefully we've been giving you uh, the feedback that you're asking for. Yeah, the feedback is telling me to be quiet, <laughs> and you're the star. Play, and stop playing music in the back. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, so we're back today. Um, Knicks just took on the Celtics in the... In the playoffs. In the playoffs. Today. Summer League playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost, but we, we said before, Summer League's not about the score, it's about development. And boy, you know, just like the second game where we kind of couldn't control our excitement about one of our young studs, the we second got another one. one. I knew it wasn't good. Another one. Pick number 36. 36. Pick number 36, uh, Mitchell Robinson. I'm sure you guys are hearing all the buzz about him. Yeah. He had a great game and showed so much athleticism. Great point about the media training. Oh, how about... I think I'm Big Meech. Big Meech. Remember where you heard it first? That's the nickname. I told Trey during the game that he reminds me of like a turtle that's born on the beach and just knows to return to water Natural without instincts. any. She does not like that metaphor. <laughs> but animal lovers out there, I know you know what I'm talking about. But um, just Mitchell Robinson, man, crazy. Yeah, he seems to have that raw natural talent for yeah. basketball. He dropped out of college um, after a little time and yeah. spent uh, the last year training with a coach. Yeah. And so not, we didn't really know what he was doing. I think that's why he also dropped so far back in the draft and was picked at number 36. Yeah. But wow, what a gem. We're, we're over the moon. We couldn't help our excitement today just watching him up there yeah. blocking shots. He had, he, had, he had a great game. He had 17 points, uh, 12 rebounds, and 6 blocks. Which and is... the blocks were what were amazing because he's blocking the shot but keeping it in play, which I think is tremendous because... It keeps the ball um, in the game. Yeah, it keeps and the ball in the game. You see a lot of these guys. Um, I, I love that you brought that up, right? That's a really, it's a point a lot of analysts talk about. They're even thinking about really tracking that stat. A lot of guys block the shot. They want to put it in the crowd, uh, wag the finger, let you know not to come in here. But whose ball is it? It's their the ball other, again. The other team, exactly. <laughs> and Mitchell just so I don't think he's thinking about that stuff when he's out there. That's a crazy thing. I don't think he's thinking. Let me keep it in bounds. I think he's I just such know. a natural it's, guy. Yeah, he, he just can't help. Yeah, it. he. I mean, he, he. He's fast up and down the court. He has these broad shoulders. I'm nicknaming him Broadway. I mean, he has like tremendous, <laughs> and, he, and he has a really small frame. So he's a small frame right now because he's oh, still he's young. Oh, he's gonna fill out. He's gonna bulk up and yeah. fill out. But if you look at his stature, you're gonna see these like really uh, almost his shoulders almost look too big. For his body, too broad, right too wide. Yeah, yeah. he's coming to play on Broadway. Well, not quite Broadway, but you know, it's New York City. Broadway, yeah. we can we can go with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking what I see from him. The game today, um, they were down as much as 21 points. Yeah. And even though we didn't care about the score at all, we were still like, ah, oh, you know, we'd like to have seen a win from them. But then they were able to close that gap to four points. Exactly, and you know, it's what we saw against the Lakers again. Even though um, we lost that game in the end, when Kevin Knox went off and that great third quarter run, they came back and like we said. The scores aren't that important in Summer League, we're looking at development, but you know what we're seeing? We're seeing that kind of Fizdale culture, spirit, hardworking thing starting now. And Fizdale was there. And Fizdale was there again, of yeah. course, sitting next to Mario Hozonia. We're going to talk about him in future episodes. But um, again, just from, you know, Kevin Knox didn't have a great game today, um, and, he, you know, he's been doing pretty well. Still 15 points. Still 15, still 15 points, points, even though, you know, he's yeah. 5 of 20 shooting, which isn't great at all, but... What we love from Knox too kind of embodies what we just said. His he energy, doesn't stop. yeah, his his energy. He like he, he he never gave up. Like he he goes and he goes and he goes, and he seems to just have like this. Uh, He's like relentless. This drive to just keep going, scoring. He does not yeah. care. And I think you know what it is. He doesn't get discouraged. His, yeah, his, yeah. His, his character seems that like he's Jessica Go Getter, and he's like gonna try and try and try again. He never got never never 
feeling like, oh, I didn't make it. Like, he just kept shooting the ball. He even though he wasn't going. making the basket, it, it was no big deal. But not like Melo. Because mm. she's not like <laughs> Melo at all. There were games at the Garden Sorry, where it's not a Melo you can just hear <laughs> the groans when Melo just got in that ISO position. Even when Kevin Knox is not scoring, he's still trying to make things happen, still getting fouled, still getting to the line, still putting pressure on the defense. So I love seeing that. I got a question for you, Trey. Do you think Alonzo Trier likes me? <laughs> you can apologize. Son, I'll never doubt you again. I, I gotta I gotta chill. I'm I'm taking a step back. I'm taking the L. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not wrong and strong here. I will say I judged him too soon. He he I think he'll still frustrate us at times, maybe when he's in that kind of run and gun mode trying to play Jura Smith. Mm. But he's been so good past the last two games with Frank out. If he's like now that he he knows Frank is out, he knows he's the only point guard there. Right. He's taking it on himself. I'm not gonna shoot as much. I'm gonna get players involved. And when he didn't hit his shots, he made them. I mean, right. that's what you want to see from your yep. point guard, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Dotson, again, uh, yeah. um, you know, I'm thinking he's supposed to be like one of the leaders of the team. And these young guys are completely outshining him. These I, three young guys that we saw doing well today were Kevin, Mitchell, and well, Alonzo. And Alonzo. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I'm, listen, I said it during the game, I said it to Trey, uh, it would be a bit, of, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know if Dotson could get dropped, like, shockingly out of the blue, because not immediately, I know, there's a whole summer to go, but the Knicks are going to have to make a decision at some point, because I believe right now we already have too many players, we're trying to trade Courtney Lee, um, that's proving a bit difficult because of his contract, um, so I know we might st be stretching Noah, there's a lot of stuff that could be I'm happening. I'm just going to ask you, what's going on with Noah? Because they're yeah. paying him a whole lot of money to be up in the country, or the mountains, <laughs> or wherever he is, we're paying him a lot of money. <laughs> I'm hearing they're talking about stretching out his contract he, to, pay, to pay him off. Pay him off over, over a, a few years. Time. Yeah, some, uh, they've asked Perry and Mills about this the past couple of days. And they've kind of said, you know, we don't know what's going to happen yet. I think, I think it might come down to Fizdale. I think if Fizdale feels around training camp time a couple of months from now that like Noah can definitely add something to his team, they may listen to him and keep him on. But I know they're looking for two free agents next year. And, you know, Noah being gone makes that so much easier. Speaking of free agents next year. Kari was at the game today, obviously, because the Boston Celtics were playing. Yeah, sure, that's why. Right. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he and he, <laughs> and he liked a certain comment. I, I saw, he did. You know, we see all this. He I got a, a thing on Instagram with <laughs> Jimmy Butler and Kyrie liking comments. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not on the Instagram game. I'm not Chris Steps. But what I will say is that he looked a little impressed after one of those Kevin Knox and ones. I saw a little smile on his face before Jalen Brown looked at him, like, kept him in check. He did. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> All right, guys. So just want to say thanks so much for following us and subscribing to us. Uh, we're going to put the link down below so you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Yep. And we're enjoying all the comments, so please keep them coming, and we'll try to respond to all of them in a timely fashion.